Hello everyone, welcome to our lecture series of Time Value of Money under our playlist Engineering Economics. So in this lecture video, we are going to talk about the concept of economic equivalence. So firstly, what we, what we can see here, we have two terms, economy and equivalence. So firstly, under our economic equivalence, so the concept of eco economic equivalence it is simply a fundamental, it is a fundamental, it is a fundamental concept and based on this uh, and based on this concept uh, many uh, engineering uh, economic competitions are made so uh, based upon this fundamental concept many engineering economic engineering economic or uh, economic competitions are made or based so what does equivalence uh, economic equivalence refer to so uh, economic uh, equivalence is simply is our it is a combination of it is, uh, it is simply the combination of uh, interest rate interest rate i interest rate i and time value of money so i'm simply written, writing it as tvm time value of uh, money to determine to determine different amounts of money which are equivalent different amount of time to determine different amount of determine different amount of money uh, which are which are equal which are equal in they are not equal uh, they are equal in terms of economic value they are equal uh, in terms of economic value in different period of time in different period of in different period of time so what does this refer to so let me give you a simple example so in a current period of time so uh, right now uh, let's say you can buy uh, buy a packet of biscuit so you have a packet of biscuit so suppose you can buy uh, this packet of biscuit with the help of one dollar so you can buy one packet of biscuit this is at current time period now but let's say in suppose uh, in 10 years from now for the same packet of biscuit it is going to cost us uh, let's say five dollars so this is in the time period of 10 years so what you can see over here is uh, in terms of this packet of biscuit in terms of this packet of biscuit the one dollar and five dollars are economical equivalent they are not equal to each other uh, equal to each other but they are economical equivalent because with this one dollar now we can we can buy the same packet of biscuit and in the time period of five years in sorry in the time period of 10 years we are going to buy the same packet of biscuit so one dollar and five dollar they are not equal they are not economical equal but they are economical equivalent uh, equivalent but they are economically uh, equivalent this is our present value and this is our future value we have already talked about future value and present value in our introduction video to time value of money which link you can find in the description box below so as you can see here um so as you can see here this uh this economic e equivalency depends upon our interest rate i and time value of money uh, and as i have explained before our time value of money depends on interest rate comp number of compounding years and time period so as you can simply say uh, the economic equivalent means our present value and our future value being equal uh, are uh, being equal and basically what is our concept of economic equivalences our concept of equivalent uh, economic equivalence says that uh, two things are said to be equivalent two things are said to be equivalent when they have or when they produce the same effect when they produce the same effect so as you can see here both of these one dollar and ten and five dollars have the same effect of buying the same packet of biscuit hence they are economically equivalent uh, equivalent and um, and uh, under our economic equivalence what we can do is uh, suppose we have our certain cash flow so it is our cash outflow and this is our cash inflow so we have uh, we have already uh, created a separate lecture video regarding our uh, cash flow diagram which you can find in the description box below so let me just simply explain what is our cash flow diagram and here uh, this upward sign uh, above this x axis means our cash inflow which means cash is coming inward and we have our downward arrow which means our cash outflow um, cash outflow and, and as you can see here over we have many series of uh, uh, many series of inflow and outflow as you can see here we have uh, we have all these series of inflow over here and we have all these series of uh, all these series of cash uh, cash outflow over here and what uh, and what does my concept of economic equivalence tells me that uh, means uh, all these uh, all these cash flow it can be converted into uh, it can be converted into a uh, an equivalent ca cash flow at any point in time so as you can see what i can simply do is for all this cash flow i can convert this into a 
single cash flow at the present time which is known which is which is going to be known as our present worth or i can also convert all of this cash flow at our end of time which is known as our future worth so we have our present worth and future worth present worth simply means our uh, simply means our present worth simply means our present value present value at current time it is going to be summation of all our cash inflow and cash outflow but at our present time at our at our present time next we have our future worth which means our future value it's also the summation of all our cash flow all our uh, all our cash flow but at future time but at future time so uh, in order to understand more about cash flow uh, present worth and future worth we can uh, check our next video uh, uh, next video uh, on which we have uh, explained about it uh, clearly but you, you might have got a uh, basic uh, information regarding our cash flow present worth and present uh, and future worth so basically economic equivalence simply means certain sum of money which are going to be equal in uh, which, are, which, are, which are going to be economically equivalent but they are not in same uh, same amount of time so as you can see here this one dollar and five dollar they are not uh, economically equivalent at the same period but this one dollar and five dollars are economically equivalent in the gap of our 10 years uh, in gap of our 10 years so let's uh, talk more about principles regarding to economic equivalence so now let's talk about our different principles related to our concept of economic equivalence. So let's talk about our principle first. So what does our principle first tell us? So our principle first tells us that uh, econo uh, equ equivalence calculations made to compare alternatives uh, require common time basis. So let me just write it down over here. Equivalence calculations. So basically why we need uh, economic equivalence is we are going to convert all our uh, cash flows uh, into a single cash flow uh, and we are going to compare different uh, different alternatives so we can know which is our best alternatives among our different alternatives equivalence calculations made to compare equivalence uh, calculations made to compare alternatives made to compare alternatives require common time basis require common time basis so let me uh, explain this with the help of our cash flow diagram so let's say we have a certain cash flow over here this is our time zero this is our time period one two three four year and in our time period zero we have a certain cash outflow and in time period one we have a certain cash inflow until our period four and let's say we have another uh, alternative so this is our project a and this is our alternative project b and it has also a certain amount of cash flow in our time period zero so the cash flow it may be let's say uh, 100 dollars and the cash inflow might be 10 dollars 20 dollars 30 dollars and 40 dollars while for our uh, this cash outflow might be let's say 200 dollars and the cash inflow are let's say 20 40 60 and 80 dollars so as you can basically see over here we have different cash flow uh, we have different cash flow occurring at different period of uh, at a different period of time and in order to compare this a and b uh, a and b we need to calculate, calculate either our present worth which is denoted as pw or we need to calculate our future worth fw so what is our present worth and future worth so basically for our future worth what we are going to do is let's say we are going to calculate the future worth of this cash flow what we are going to do is we are going to convert all this cash flow into an equivalent cash flow at our time t equals to zero so this is going to be our present worth present worth and for this as well we are also going to calculate our present worth pw and whichever has our greater present present worth, we are going to select. Uh, we are going to uh, select that type of alternative. So I have already created a separate video regarding our present worth, future worth, and cash flow. So you can check that out for better understanding. But for our simple uh, understanding, so as uh, as our principle one says, equivalence calculations are made to compare alternatives which require our common time basis. So our common time basis is our time t equals to zero. But our calculations are not made only at our present worth. We can make our calcul uh, make our choice using our future worth as well future worth means our at our end of time which is at our fourth year at our fourth year we might calculate our future worth which is also the which is also the sum of our all cash flow but this time we'll be calculating our future value in the previous case we are going to calculate the present value of all the cash flow at time t equals to zero but in our future worth we'll be calculating the future value of all the cash flow at time t equals to four years so 
in this way our our uh, first principle of eco economic equivalence tells us converting our cash flow uh, into a into a single cash flow at a common time basis which might be at our present time so present worth or our, at our future time which is going to be our uh, future uh, future future uh, worth and selecting the present worth or future worth to make our decisions uh, are uh, to make our decisions for our alternative they are chosen according to our convenience so now moving on to our second principle so what our second principle basically tells us is that our economic equivalence depends upon our uh, interest interest rate and the uh, equivalence between cash flows the equivalence between the equivalence between uh, cash flow it is it is simply a function of a magnitude uh, of it is simply a so our equivalence of cash flow is a function of magnitude it is a function of magnitude and timing of function of magnitude and timing of individual individual cash flows which is uh, i'm writing it as cf and and interest rate and interest rate i so suppose let's say we have our uh, present value as hundred dollars let's say thousand dollars and uh, we need to find our future value we need to find our future value so we have our simpler formula is yeah p equals to pv one plus i by n raised to the power n into t so let's say our t is one year and n is also one year then we have simply our relation yeah p equals to pv into one plus i so as you can see here more is our number of i more is our uh, number of i so as you can see here our future value is directly depending upon our i this is directly depending upon our i so our one is a constant so as you can directly see our future value is directly proportional with our i so as you can see here the uh, our concept of economic equivalence highly depends upon our uh, uh, interest rate the uh, uh, interest rate so between different cash flows interest rate between those cash flow and the magnitude of uh, magnitude of our cash flow as well so as you can see here so let's say we have a certain cash flow over here and let's say it has uh, larger cash flows larger cash flows while we have another uh, cash flow which has smaller magnitude of cash flows so let's say this is if uh, this individual cash flows are a thousand dollar each while it's are going to be just hundred dollar each so in order to be uh, both of these cash flow to be equivalent the interest rate applying among these cash flow needs to be higher while the interest rate applying among these uh, cash flow needs to be uh, needs to be less so that both of these cash flows can be equivalent so as you can see here this is a little bit uh, a little bit of uh, easier than our principal first so it basically tells us uh, tells us that our um, economic equivalence highly depends upon our interest rate and our uh, basically our equivalence of different cash flow is simply the function of uh, magnitude and timing of individual cash flows and the interest and the interest rate applied between those cash flows now moving on to our principle three what our principle basically tells us is that uh, in order to um, in order to do our econo equivalence calculations, what we need to do is we need to convert our multiple cash flow into single cash flow. So we have already talked on this earlier in our first, uh, in our uh, in our uh, first principle as well. So as you can see here, let's say we have a certain cash flow where we have multiple amount of cash flow. So we have many cash flow out or uh, cash outflow. So we have some cash inflow as well. So we have many cash outflows. Uh, so these are many cash inflows while we have our many cash outflow. So in order to perform our equivalence calculations, so uh, uh, in order to perform equivalence calculation, and we have another alternative. So where there are also many cash outflows, many cash inflows. Uh, so we need to convert both of them into a single, uh, single cash flows. So a single uh, cash flow, which might be a single cash outflow or a single cash inflow. So it might be something like this. This might be my, this might be my single cash flow, and this also might be my single cash flow. So this is, this is my single cash flow for this one then we can compare both of these alternatives both of these alternatives are uh, uh, alternatives by the uh, present worth future worth which we have explained in our next video so in this way our principle th uh, basically tells us about converting our uh, multiple cash flow into a single uh, a single ca a single cash flow in order to uh, in order to compare different alternatives uh, alternatives and uh, the conversion into a single cash 
cash flow might be a single cash inflow or a single cash outflow depending upon the nature of our cash flow so now for our final principle so our final principle basically tells us that our equivalence our equivalence is uh, maintained regardless of our equivalence is maintained regardless of point of view our our economic equivalence is maintained regardless of point of view as long as our interest rate as uh, as long as our uh, interest rate uh, used in our equivalence uh, is in our equivalence must be same must be maintained or must be same so what does this refer to means so while we are let's let's draw cash flow to dis describe this we have a certain cash flow over here and uh, in our cash flow uh, in our cash flow uh, there are many different cash flow so there might be different cash flow and between all of these cash flows so uh, our cash flow uh, might be uh, might be drawn with a, a different point of view but uh, might be drawn uh, with different point of view but uh, those point of view are not going to get uh, are not going to get a matter until and unless we have the same interest rate applying between all these cash flows the interest rate applied uh, along all of this cash flow must be same so this is what basically our principle four tells us so hopefully you have understood the concept of economic equivalence and the four principles related to it if you have any queries we can comment down below for our future videos uh, for our other videos related to our time value of money and economic engineering economics do subscribe to the channel and we can check our playlist of engineering economics thank you